Welcome to Cat Chat. In today's episode, we'll meet one of the many awesome rescue kitties looking for a new home, and we'll be talking about common causes of upper respiratory infections. <laughs> also, I'll share one simple thing I read about that I'm trying to help prevent chronic URIs in one of my cats. First off, let's go in and meet Lambo. Lambo is a gorgeous one-year-old black tuxedo with super soft medium length fur. She was brought to the shelter a couple of months ago after being hit by a car and as a result of the accident one of her back legs had to be amputated. Needless to say, she was pretty terrified and kept to her kitty cubby hole for a while. She's now learning to trust and is beginning to come out to socialize and play and it looks like she's able to get around just fine with three legs. Lambo loves other cats and she's almost always cuddled up with Normandy, another cat connection rescue kitty. With a little patience and a lot of love, Lambo will be an awesome, devoted, and appreciative addition to the family. If you'd like to meet Lambo, give Cat Connection a call or stop by for a visit. Now on to upper respiratory infections, or URIs. We adopted one of our cats, Tabitha, in April, and when we brought her home, she was sneezing profusely, her left eye was watering, and she had what looked like scabs around her eye. A few days later, she started sneezing green stuff, which meant she had an upper respiratory infection. URIs require medical intervention, and after she finished a course of antibiotics prescribed by the vet, she was sneezing much less and no more green stuff. But her left eye continued to water, and she had not stopped sneezing altogether. I discovered that Tabitha had been affected by the feline herpes virus, also known as FVR or feline viral rhinopneumonitis. <laughs> oh, I hope I pronounced that right. I'd never heard of cat herpes before, and no, it's not a sexually transmitted disease. It's actually pretty common and is spread from one cat to another by sharing litter boxes, food and water dishes, or by the cats grooming each other. Most URIs in cats are caused by the feline herpes virus or by Khaleesi virus, both of which can sometimes lead to a lifetime of chronic URIs. Lots of people, including me, get the FBRCP vaccine for their cats and assume their cat is completely protected, but apparently there are different strains, so it's not 100%. It does, however, shorten the length and reduce the severity of a cat's symptoms should they become infected. Once I learned what Tabitha was dealing with, the research began to figure out how best to manage it. Turns out, there are lots of other cat people on the internet who have had to contend with this, and the vast majority sing the praises of L-Lysine for getting it under control and preventing recurring infections. So, based on what I've read, I decided to give Tabitha 500 milligrams of L-Lysine twice a day, or 1,000 milligrams a day, for five days, then cut the dosage down to 250 milligrams per day to see if it helped. L-Lysine comes in different forms, and I opted for the type and treat form made especially for cats. Problem is, Tabitha doesn't want to eat them, so I end up crushing them up and sprinkling them in her food. <laughs> I should have gotten the cheaper stuff. On a side note, my other cat, Monet, came across one of the treats and gobbled it up, so I guess it depends on the cat's tastes. The first few days, there didn't seem to be much of a difference, but by about day four, the sneezing definitely subsided. We're on day seven now. Her eye still waters a little bit, but less than before, and she doesn't seem to sneeze anymore. If you've had any experience with cat herpes or Khaleesi virus, please post your comments and let me know if you've tried this, whether or not it worked for you, if there's something else people with herpes cats should try, etc. That's all for now. See you next time on Cat Chat.